patients come to Madonna, they are at the lowest point in their lives. They've survived a traumatic illness or injury, but now have to face very real disabilities that have changed their lives. At Madonna, the first step in rehabilitation is surrounding each person with support, like a blanket of hope. Hope is the spark that starts the healing process, enabling patients to see that the limits they have today do not need to be a life sentence. This starts with the staff, who must have the talent and expertise to work with a highly specialized team who have the talent and experience to individualize a program for each patient, addressing their unique talents and interests. A culture of hope also includes the most advanced technology, most of which is only available in the region at Madonna. Patients must have access to a full range of state-of-the-art equipment that is able to address their struggles at every stage of their recovery. All of these aspects create the Madonna difference, and nothing reflects that difference more than the five 2013 Goal Award honorees. of this year's honorees were either ventilator or tracheostomy tube dependent at some point during their recovery. Madonna is one of the few rehabilitation hospitals in the country that admits patients of all ages who use ventilators. Madonna's pulmonary rehabilitation staff has one of the highest success rates in the country of helping patients breathe free of a ventilator, as evidenced by the individuals you will meet today. In 2012, Trent Borland was a surveyor for an excavation company in Kansas City and a busy husband and father. He went to his doctor to check out weakness in his arm and was diagnosed with a tumor in his spine. Exploratory surgery resulted in the removal of the tumor, but with unexpected consequences. The doctor came out after surgery and said that the surgery went well, he got the tumor, um, but Trent wasn't moving and he didn't know why. And I was out about uh, 13 days or so. And when they brought me to, then I realized that I couldn't move anymore. And I couldn't breathe on my own. And, yeah, it was, it was pretty much a shock. The surgery had resulted in respiratory failure and quadriplegia for Trent. The most movement he could manage was to shrug his shoulders. He was unable to eat or drink and required a feeding tube as well as a ventilator to breathe. After transferring from KU Medical Center in Kansas City to Madonna, Trent began occupational and physical therapy, learning how to adapt to life with paralysis. But adapting to the ventilator was a challenge. I had a lot of anxiety. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe well. Um, I, I had to take medication to cope with it. It made me real uneasy. It was an unnatural way of, of breathing. Madonna Spinal Cord Injury Program Manager Diane Ulmer recommended the Borlands explore a diaphragm pacer implant, a device that can restore a person's ability to breathe without a ventilator. Madonna physiatrist Dr. Paul Krabenhoft led the effort to bring this new medical device to the Midwest in partnership with St. Elizabeth Regional Medical Center. After Trent passed the test to determine if the device would work, he underwent the surgery by Dr. Greg Fitzke, still not knowing if it would work until it was implanted. They went in and did the surgery and uh, we just waited and finally they both come out and were very excited that Everything worked and they said it was working really good. Once I got the pacer, I felt so much free. I went from a point where I didn't really uh, want to live to a point where you know, I'm grateful for being here. There's so much that I would have missed out on from being a father to my girls and a husband to my wife. I'm just grateful for rehab. Trent has returned home to life in Lone Jack, Missouri, with the diaphragm pacer giving him the opportunity to do things he otherwise couldn't. We're doing really good. 
We get out, we go to the kids' ball games, and we go to friends' houses, and, and do stuff just like we did before. I've been breathing on my own without the pacer for uh, up to four hours every day. That was probably the biggest improvement overall that I had. I went four or five months without seeing my daughters. Uh, I only saw them twice in that period. You know, getting to be with them every day was just a, such a blessing for me. Love you. Garrett Girardin served two tours in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. His job was dangerous, scouting for roadside bombs in advance of convoys to identify potential threats. But he returned to Junction City, Kansas in July of 2010 unscathed. It was a snowy early morning drive later that winter which sent Garrett's life on a different path when his Jeep slid on the ice and crashed down a ravine. The magnitude of what had actually happened I was unaware of at that time. It wasn't until I was told that he was a Glasgow Coma 4. And of course, I had no idea what that meant. Um, it wasn't until the neurosurgeon said, well, you're a 15, three is brain dead, your husband's a four. The neurosurgeon asked if he was a donor. Um, and I said, what do you mean, is he a donor? And he said, well, he's basically brain dead, you need to pull the ventilator and let him pass. He's never going to come out of this. So something told me, do not give up on him. And I said, please go in there and fix my husband. A lot of praying, a lot of crying. <laughs> but um, six days later, COP opened his eyes. They settled us about this wonderful place in Lincoln, Nebraska that specialized in traumatic brain injuries and that they felt that that was the best place for, for Garrett to go. Garrett arrived from Stormont Vale in Topeka to Madonna on a ventilator, a feeding tube and with a brain shunt. He hadn't been moved from his bed in three weeks. We got to Madonna and the first day we were there, they had him up. It was amazing. That, that we didn't even have chance to really put our bags down. And they had him up and moving and getting him, getting him going. It was like a spark had ignited. The therapist, they got him up and they got him starting to take his first steps. I mean, at first it was two steps and then it was 10 steps. And then pretty soon, um, especially Scott had him basically doing laps around the hospital. Me and Scott were known as a gruesome twosome. When Brother Owen and Charles made like 12 times, like right now, no, not yet. Can't keep going. I, I'm so tired. Like, come on, come on, you can do it. Like, I'll try, okay. I can't and not your vocabulary. I can't, I will. Three years of continued progress later, Garrett enjoys time with his family at home in Junction City, working as a barracks sergeant at Fort Riley. His independence ranges from doing everything around the house to the ability to drive, which he accomplished earlier this year. I will shy, but now I am not I am tense. I do them in the living room. Walk a little play, I talk a little play. I'm all there, I'm fine. I'm all there. Then take me a little longer to go. He's done amazing, and I'm so proud of him. We really were given a second chance. Not everyone gets those, and so we've decided to just grab it and go with it and really enjoy this chance we've been given. There's miracles in this world, and my husband is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm.